Hello and welcome back to Smug and Play, the YouTube show that, among other things, is playing through all of PC Gamer's demo CD-ROMs beginning in 1994 and off into however many years as we can possibly cover. Uh, so welcome to 2021 and more importantly, welcome to November of 1995, um, which has a rather confusing cover to PC Gamer, which is sort of reproduced here on the disc. Um, we see this spider creature here, and then the headline game is MechWarrior 2, which confused me greatly as a child. I did have this as a child, and when I played the MechWarrior 2 demo, I didn't see any giant spiders. So what, what happened here? <laughs> what happened here? Well, obviously you just sort of tore through the magazine and, and forgot about the... Uh, the cover of that magazine, but the, the, uh, the cover story for uh, the actual magazine this month is uh, Realms of Arcania Shadows over Riva. Right, so this is the the latest installment in Surtek's uh, Realms of Arcania RPG series. Um, and yeah. it, it got the picture on the front of the disc sleeve, although MechWarrior got the lead title, and there is no demo of Realms of Arcania on here. There, it also says on the back, you notice this, it says uh, Interplay's Stonekeep. That's not in focus, but you can kind of see it there. Interplay Stonekeep is another um, RPG from this era, which actually doesn't appear on the disc at all. Either. There's actually a disclaimer though on the bottom of uh, the bottom of the back there. I think it says, yes. Contents, content actual subject. contents are subject to change. Yes, content subject to change, right. So yeah, I mean, this stuff was was uh, quickly, hastily put together, and so I'm not surprised about the yeah. graphics issue or the lack of inclusion of titles. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of all par for the course for 1995 here. Yeah. Um, now, if you... I mean, you, think, you would think, though, this is their 12th... We should celebrate. This is their 12th uh, CD. Yes. And... Uh, so maybe they should have had their shit together, but, you know, whatever. Yes, this is the 12th CD. This is Volume 2, Number 11. Now, you may ask, what was Volume 1? Well, Volume 1 was a single... Uh, one of one. A, a one of one. It was a single issue, the first issue that had a CD-ROM in, I believe, December of 1994, and then they immediately went to Volume 2 for 1995. All of that is just PC Gamer Inside Baseball. Not that, not that we don't like doing that on the show, but... Now, if you turn... A few pages into the November '95 issue. Um, well, actually, if you turn to like the first page or something, there's like a Command and Conquer ad. Yes. And I was wondering why isn't that on the disc? I mean, it won I, Editor's Choice this month. Yeah. So this month being November 1995. Command and Conquer is out now. It has gotten a 91 percent Editor's Choice in the review section of this month's magazine. Unfortunately, it is absent from the disc, and I don't believe will appear until January of '96, which is. <sighs> a long time to wait for what is a huge breath of fresh air. Um, you and I have now played through 12 of these discs, and there are some really frustrating interactive experiences on these. Um, this is a tough time for computer RPGs. Um, they're trying to adopt new technology, but you know it's, it's pushing their dev cycles out, and the new tech being introduced is not being uh, met with huge approval from the established computer RPG crowd, so they're not rewarding all that effort with huge sales. And we're starting to see games, and we'll see games I think in this episode, that are incorporating new graphics techniques like perspective correct texture mapping, which is really pushing even the fastest machines of this era absolutely to their limit. Um, and so we got, we got some games this month that will chug on my machine, which is the fastest machine you could have in 1995, 133 megahertz Pentium. Um, so, as I was saying, if you turn a few pages in, you will see a two-page advertisement from the add-in board manufacturer, Diamond Multimedia, uh, that begins, I just want, it has a lovely piece of introductory verse, I'd just like to call out here. You just entered hostile territory and your need for domination is extreme. Which... I think Jensen wrote that. I. I don't know who wrote it. Uh, there are so many red flags there that... But anyway, this advertisement, which begins with this beautiful piece of, of verse, um, is for their new Diamond Edge 3D Multimedia Accelerator. 
And this is the first time we've seen a 3D accelerator board advertised in PC Gamer. Um, and this is, uh, if you look in the sort of screenshots, you'll see that the games are all sort of Sega games, with the exception of uh, Descent. Um, we have Virtual Fighter Remix, um, and we also see a little screenshot of uh, Papyrus's NASCAR Racing uh, that would be used. Uh, would, there'd be a lot of patches for that for various early 3D accelerators. But um, this is pretty much the first commercially available consumer 3D texture mapping uh, multimedia accelerator. And it's based on this relative unknown at this point, NVIDIA NV1 first generation architecture. Now there'll be many NVs to come, but NV1 is a really important sort of landmark for the company and for the industry, although it itself is going to be a miserable, miserable failure. <laughs> Ultimately, NV1 will support a whopping seven games. I can count them on two hands, seven games. Um, this was the era when you spent 300 bucks on a 3D accelerator and you got to play seven games. Um, NVIDIA would ultimately release a Direct3D driver, but be, the Direct3D specification and NV1's like, hardware are such a horrible mismatch that the Direct3D driver, the performance is abysmal and the, and the rendering sure. is too buggy for it to be useful. It basically, post mid-96, this thing is completely useless, but it is a decent 2D accelerator, so you can still, you know, just use it as a Windows mm -hmm. card. Um, so did you did you want to talk about where we are in, in the world of 3D acceleration? Because we're yeah. not really even there yet. So let's let's bring everyone specs. sort of quickly up yeah. to speed here. I said that NV1 is really one of the first consumer uh, 3D graphics accelerators available for the PC. It is actually, to, from my uh, research, the second. The first one was Western Digital's Paradise uh, 3D Tasmania, um, which you've never heard of because um, as two days after this was announced, Western Digital sold off their graphics division to Philips. And as soon as Philips found out about this product, they ceased production. However, they didn't cease it in time for at least two of these boards to exit, to, to get out of the factory. So there are two boards known to exist of, of this uh, Paradise you know, 3D Tasmania <laughs> board. Um, and this is not like a lost, I mean, it is cool. It is like the first texture mapping 3D graphics accelerator available. Like the later 3DFX Voodoo, uh, it does not have built-in 2D support. It uses a path through, uh, pass through. Um, but it doesn't actually support perspective correct texturing, which is kind of a downer. So from the fact that it basically doesn't exist and that it doesn't really have a huge hardware feature set, um, you know, we don't really care about it. Now, in September of this same year, 1995, a, another startup named Rendition has announced their Verite V1000 accelerator, and it's caught a lot of attention from big players like Looking Glass and from id Software. Um, but they're really busy working out bugs, you know, on the hardware and software sites. So we haven't seen that come to market yet. And indeed we won't see it come to market uh, for some time. Now- Yeah, and that one will work with Direct3D yeah. later, right? And so it's like an actual working- That board. one will That one will ultimately support Direct3D to a certain extent. Um, 3D Labs, the workstation professional 3D CAD add-in board manufacturer, will announce the uh, the gaming glint chip, and that will appear um, shortly after this in Creative's 3D Blaster board. Um, and this is basically a, a scaled-down workstation chip, um, so you would expect it to you know perform pretty well. Interestingly, um, 3D Labs is known for supporting uh, OpenGL. This particular board does not support OpenGL. It only supports Creative's proprietary Creative Graphics Library, which will have a support, uh, which will ultimately support a total of 13 games, which is more than I can count on two hands, which puts it well beyond the, uh, <laughs> well beyond the NV1's uh, sort of library. 
but you know it's it's also not going to be uh, sure. a major player. You're not going right. to hear right. about that. And they're so the problem. The reason why this didn't pan out is because creative reasons that blow my mind decided to release this as a Vesa local bus card, which means that it's available on some high end four eighty sixes and maybe a handful of of Pentium systems, but you know, you really want PCI at this point, because that's what most of the like gaming Pentium desktops are going to have. But this original card was face a local bus, and when when Creative releases their 3D Blaster PCI, they'll have moved on to rendition verite. So you're yeah. never gonna hear about gaming and, blend again. And and meanwhile, the, the big two players here like S3 and ATI are tacking kind of like basic 3D uh, features right. onto their 2D accelerator boards. So they, ATI, you know, is either has or is soon to announce the Rage. Uh, yeah. And uh, S3 is going to come out with the Verge soon. But right. I really tried to come up with some way of excusing these board manufacturers for making very slow pieces of junk, but I couldn't find <laughs> one. I think, well, I think they, I mean, I think they, thought of it as like, okay, we need to support some features by linear filtering, maybe a Z buffer, although sometimes the Z buffer just made things slower. Yeah, uh, I mean the problem with they, these early cards. They, they weren't serious about getting frame rates. They just kinda wanted to support the feature. Well so so at this point, around this point and I believe in I don't know if it's in I think it is in November. At this point in November, ATI will announce three D rage. It won't appear until next year. I don't remember when S3 announced Verge, but again, Verge won't appear until next year as their uh, evolutions of their existing popular um, 2D accelerators. So S3 right now is the biggest sort of OEM for graphics cards, and their big card right now is the Trio 64, uh, a 64-bit 2D GUI accelerator. They're going to tack on 3D to that and make Verge the virtual reality graphics engine. ATI's big product right now is the Mach 64, which is not unlike um, the Trio 64. It's a 64-bit GUI accelerator. They're going to tack 3D onto that and call it 3D Rage. And you know these these mainstream manufacturers are are trying to sort of ride trends and see where the industry is going and and make feature sets that look appealing to OEMs so that they can advertise these machines as having 3D capabilities, but and, and if you look at the spec documents, they'll have some sort of impressive, like maximum, uh, uh, you know, throughput. You know, like they'll have a Texel rate, which seems impressive. It'll be comparable to home consoles, like the Saturn and the PlayStation. But then, when you turn on any of the features, like bilinear filtering, Z buffering, and these other things, so that Texel rate suddenly gets cut in half, or you know, as you actually enable things to make the rendering look, you know, like an improvement over software rendering. Um, suddenly the, the, the pixel throughput hits the floor and that's why these cards will later be sort of termed 3D decelerators uh, because when you actually use them with the features you want, they end up being slower than software rendering. Um, and it's gonna be a while before we have actual accelerators that give you a great frame rate with all of the bells and whistles, all those features that actually do make the actual rendered image superior to what you would be getting in software. Um, so we've got a lot to look forward to. This is, this is when the show, we spent a whole year <laughs> with the show sort of in, this, in the doldrums of, you know, early Windows 9X gaming. We don't have Direct 3D. Well, Most of the time we didn't have Windows 95. Well, I don't know. We, now we don't, we don't have, have acceleration. Anything but software rendering. But, you know, it's an interesting time. There's a lot of RPG games. Um, there's a lot of sport or pinball games, uh, <laughs> most of which we don't review here. Um, I mean, there are fantastic and, games and, coming and, out this year. It's in different, it's with different genre. Conquer. Yeah. Just we have different, Mech Warrior different 2. Genre. Mech Warrior 2, which we're going to talk about. So, <laughs> Is that your whole thing, Mech Warrior 2? Should we talk about the games? Let's talk about the games. Are you All ready? Right, yes. Are you ready? Let me see yeah. if this computer still works. You gotta so, boot up the VIX. You gotta remember that our our whole spiel and, and shtick here is that we play these games on original hardware. And so here is my Pentium One Thirty Three. 
um, booting up here and I get my <clears throat> keyboard set up. I think we'll uh, do a little bit of extended memory at the moment. Um, so I've got the new PC Gamer in here. Now's a good time if you have a smug and play mug to take take a relaxing sip as we transition to playing a this smug mug. Yeah, this is this is the smug mug. Uh, it's not currently available. It will be one day. Um, this is how we do merch here. We show you stuff you can't buy. LTTstore.com. Oh my God. Oh. I'm gonna have to do a separate video about them. Hey Intel, yeah. if you're watching, I'd happily take five thousand dollars to renew my digital life or whatever you said and then get a neon sign get a neon bedroom. sign get some sort of horrible thing after you pay this all five thousand dollars then we'll do our wan show and say sorry amd and hype your rocket lake product if that's really what you want us to do we're not above that intel don't think that because we run an unpopular show that we have scruples it's not like that um so <clears throat> we're going to uh Enter, enter another world. Another world! I know. Again, yes. another world? You have to enter another world. So let's talk about what's on this month's disc. Obviously, uh, not Shadows Over Riva. Uh, that's not on here. And not Stonekeep. That's also I mean, not Shadows on here. Shadows Over Riva ain't that different than Star Trails. The, the previous... The, the previous predecessor. game in the series? So yeah. It's pretty much... It's the same thing. I'm not surprised. Um... So, Robots stomping. Right. Yeah, they begin with just sort of a take a look at the list of quality games and online networks to the left. And like they didn't really know what to say. Obviously, they didn't want to start by talking about all the stuff that didn't show up. Um, but, I mean, the obvious headline, headline game here is Mech Warrior 2. This game, this game was supposed to come out in 1993 as Mech Warrior 2 The Clans went through development hell. In the meantime, a million games have sprung up in the mech genre to imitate what they think MechWarrior 2 is going to be. We've played some of them on this show um, that were horrid. Um, but here, finally, at long last, the real deal, the Battletech game, a sequel to the 1989 classic MechWarrior, has shown up. And it is going to define AAA PC entertainment for at least the next seven months or so. <laughs> I'm going to say that. Um, Cyber Mage. Cyber Mage. We're going to play this, even though I really don't see the need to do it. It's it's a it's a Doom clone with a few gimmicks. The gimmicks are cool. We'll talk about the gimmicks, but um, yeah, yeah. I mean, Origin and Electronic Arts. There are some big names on here. For you're skipping Ascendancy here, which. Got a 93 editor's choice. Yes, but tell me, you had a hot take on Ascendancy. Why don't you share well, that with everyone? It's a, so it's a 4X game. You like research stuff and build out your tech tree or whatever, and there's diplomacy. But I looked at it for two seconds, and I was like, I love Alpha Centauri, and it's like 20 times better than this. So I think it should be more <laughs> like a 5%. Yeah, it's, it's the poor man's Alpha Centauri. But, um, wow, this is the best thing right now, have... but this... That's tech right. War. William Shatner's Tech War. Tech Warrior 2. <laughs> no. I like to call it. Oh. So this is the next game based on the build engine that will become famous with Duke Nukem 3 Built by and... Capstone. That's the right. The pinnacle. Built by of Capstone. Entertainment software. That's right. These guys are in, pros. In Miami. That's Miami's where the best software is written. I know, I saw that. On the sixth floor, especially. The fifth floor is not so great for development, but the sixth floor, yeah, it's made in Marl Lago or something. So, <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about this one a lot um, because it is based on William Shatner's Tech War book. <sighs> okay, Zone Raiders. Zone Raiders! Oh, did we decide we're going to play this or are we skipping? I think we should play it. It's Really? I like approachable games. It's just 1995. It is, a, like, it is approachable. It's the opposite of Ascendance. It illustrates my point about hardware of this period not being able to play games with these new graphical features. Um, so this thing chugs in SVGA mode. Yeah, I, 
If we don't end up playing it, I just, I want to throw some shade on it really quick here. Um, so the description in PC Gamer Magazine, the pages of PC Gamer Magazine for this demo um, says that, you know, following a nuclear holocaust, the poor and outcasts are, confi are confined to urban areas known as the zones. Apparently the editorial staff of PC Gamer didn't realize that Poor and outcasts were already confined to urban areas known as the projects. Um, so, PC Gamer, buy it for class white people. It's for one it, of the, class white you know, people. three premises which are available to <laughs> At this so. moment, yes. It is, it is the one of the early titles in the emerging hover car combat genre, however. Um, I mean, it's a better version of Hover, which also came out around. It now. is. So I think. I, I thought. I think I Hover thought has a better it. soundtrack, but far from that, mechanically, you're probably correct. Okay. Wetlands, as you know, in the mid '90s, federal protection for wetlands was a major uh, push by you know Democratic uh, senators and such. Uh, and this is not about that at all. Um, the, I don't know why they called this. I mean, I know why they called it wetlands. I mean, it takes place like underwater. And, but it's uh, we're not we're not actually going to play this. The cell the cell shaded animation is visually impressive. The actual like direction of what happens in those animations is so horribly horribly bad. That's the worst, the worst sort of like escape fight sequence I've ever seen. There's so many. It just makes no sense. I it it was directed by the opposite of John Woo. Let's let's put it that way. Um, Caesar spelled two. wrong. Did they spell it wrong? What the, oh, they did, didn't they? Well, I guess they didn't have that like your chair. Well, yeah. this yeah, is, tell, tell you us know, about this. No, it's it's another sort of civilization type game, uh, but with a Roman theme. It's yeah. I I I don't know. I I imposed tax rates that I thought were reasonable today, <laughs> and everybody destroyed my city. So. <laughs> Well, you shouldn't have been planning on Libertarian. Um, Silent Hunter. This is the first entry in the Silent Hunter submarine combat simulation series. Uh, these games sort of become known for both their historical accuracy as well as for their technical achievements. Um, I think many people consider Silent Hunter 3 to be the peak of the series. I also like Silent Hunter 4. Um, if you like shooting stuff in submarines, this is your thing. They have yeah, a consultant. It's a, it's a historic World yes. War II, uh, yeah, submarine simulator. Yeah, and there's some... by SSI. They need some help, SSI. You know. Yeah. Well, they, I think at this point they've lost the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons license. Um, and Silent Hunter, this game, this first Silent Hunter game, it it takes the presentation from earlier submarine games like Silent Service and kind of gussies it up a little bit um, with some sort of better 3D through the periscope and things like that. And it does feel a little bit more kinetic than earlier submarine sims, but it's it's still, you have these big static screens, you have the static captain's room and the static, um, you know, map room and bridge. And it, it's not, later, like silent, a, later Silent Hunter yeah. games would really make it feel there's, more there's like a 60 by 60 like 3d view yeah as you uh, attack you it's still really it's still look rather at it. humble like, they, they only improved upon the presentation of the last generation of submarine games somewhat um but later later silent hunter games will be great um partly because they have you know real uh you know submarine captains who who consult on it and, and bring realism into it um and that was kind of the hook for this one is they had someone who uh, was an actual captain in the you know, uh, Pacific War um, participate in it. Uh, Arcade America. I, oh, gosh. I didn't play this. I, no. saw, I saw the cartoon artwork and I thought, wow, this is, a, this is like a bad version of Brain Dead. I Routine. filed it under the same folder as Zoom. Oh, my God. Did you see? It's voice acting by Bobcat Goldthwait. Oh boy! Remember when he was popular? <laughs> He's probably one of our subscribers. I'm sorry, Bobcat. I didn't, I didn't mean it. You were great. I saw you with Nirvana. You're wonderful. Um, Zoop. 
Uh, yeah. It's I on the floppy this... this month. Yeah, that's right. If you Zoop. got a floppy, you got zooped. <laughs> yeah, man. They had a lot of ads. I, I hate the PC Gamer because whenever I, I read it, it's like, they should be paying me to read all these ads. <laughs> you know, there's the PC Gaming Master Race, right? They're the ones that get the CD-ROM edition. And then there's the C- oh. there's this PC Gaming sort of outcast. They have the floppy version. They end up with things like soup. And um, now we'll never be able to monetize. You should, capitalism. You know, the game. They have algorithms running on these videos. You know. Capitalism. Yeah, I know, well... Yeah. yeah, it's it's yeah. capitalism's had a interesting week this week, so <laughs> I don't think we'll play it. But I, I was Could thinking, we play you know, it and buy a whole bunch of GameStop shares. Is that possible? I was thinking now that GameStop is worth twenty two billion, they should buy up all these old PC games and put them back on the shelf. I I would. Visit. I think yeah. I think they should buy whole malls and just make the whole mall <laughs> be GameStop. I thought it, it could convert into a museum, charge admission. I would go if they have like oh, that rotating, would be cool. rotating like you know, uh, yeah. exhibits. So long as Reddit's keeping right. their stock, and, off, and they can they can keep the guy at the front to like sell Doom Eternal to you or whatever. You right, know, right. Like just make it an yeah. amusement park. The history of game retail. Uh, there's this Tritrus game, which is sort of like a it's a puzzle game that. The name is sort of kind of based on Tetris, and I wonder if they didn't really know what Trist was when they put that name into their title, but whatever. Uh, CompuServe is not a game. It's a way of life. As is Pipeline USA. I never used Pipeline. Um, we're not going to do it today. Again, this again, This makes Planet for... look more exciting than it typically might be, but um, we have another sort I of early like, dial again, matchmaking they, service. When they have five like isps or whatever on the bottom i should be paid to play this <laughs> like yeah there's gonna be some month where it's just isps they're sorry no games this month best of isps um <laughs> and our normal wads we got some great wads the best here. part of the cd every month okay but well, we're we're done with this i think it's time for us to play yeah a little bit of the best game i want to play some 31st century combat. Let's let's combat like it's the 31st century. The year 3057. I like how they gave themselves some leeway because like a lot of these games are like, oh, in 2005, you know, something terrible will happen. Yeah, but they right. gave themselves like yeah. a whole millennium. Basically. That's good. They're like, hey, let's not let's not make any bets here too too soon. Um, I think it's just MW2. I hope it's just MW2. Probably MW2 all Go to Please the same thing. It. Just make sure you're doing this SGBA. Intro. For the love of God. Yes, that is important. If I see 320 by 200, I will... It's not It's not good on this game to do that. No, that's not what this game is about. This game is about high-res, abstract 3D. This, when I saw this as a child, I cannot tell you how much of an impact this had on me. I was not ready when I saw this on my dad's Pentium 60, I was not ready. <laughs> How much do you think they paid SGI to make this? I don't know. I don't know the history of it. Million dollars. And then, but that explosion looks like, you know... That looks pretty Lucasfilm. That looks like yeah. industrial like, no. magic to me. Oh, you think so? Yeah. I thought the explosion was kind of canned. The Greek chorus right. that comes in here? I, I, this is... This is this is for this era, game. the best intro. This is the best intro. I mean, the staging here is stupid. It's two mechs around a little rock. But, but the explosions, the title appearing behind a curtain of flame. This curtain of flame with title cut out is going to be imitated by so many games. Descent 2 will do the same thing. A million other games will do the same thing. Um... Uh, you're about to embark on the ultimate in combat experience. Important, this is only a demo. Don't just keep on playing this over and over again. You do need to go to CompUSA and purchase the big this box demo. that also has a Timberwolf and then the the title etched in flame. I do remember the box being very pretty, but I feel like this demo exists mostly so you know that you need to upgrade your system. You know that you need to get an extended keyboard. 
Um, oh, that's not what I'm talking about. Like, you would probably pop this in your 386. And, oh, uh, yeah, you'd be done. be quite disappointed. What are you even doing? What are you... Okay, so this game is played in SVGA. If you're not playing this game in SVGA, what are you doing? Um, it's time for Smoky Smoke to log in. Um, Unix. I know, that's the thing. It's Berkeley. Berkeley Unix system, version 283. Um, so we're going to do one player. So that was another amazing thing about this game was uh, that it had online support, NetMac. Um, although I don't think that would debut until no, it didn't the Pentium come out, edition uh, in December. Release. Yeah. yeah, so we should say um, there are... This game, for so many reasons, um, I think partly because of its presentation. The game's presentation is high res, but low detail. And, high, and very abstract. We have these evocative gradients that are sort of these alien sunrises and sunsets that we see in the background. There's some sparse debris on the ground, but mostly things are flat shaded. They do have little touches of texture mapping on some of the mechs um, that adds a lot of character to it. But you know, the the it's it's a more abstract presentation, sort of like Spectre VR or something on the Macintosh, and so. It wasn't hard to dress this game up and to use this as a basis for showing how much of an improvement you can have with 3D Accelerator. And so there are more than 10 um, like separate releases of just the PC version of this game that support different 3D Accelerators. And they're all different. They all look different. They all have different bugs and quirks. But there's an ATI 3D Rage edition. There's the Titanium edition yeah. with Direct 3D support. There's a Power VR edition. There's a Matrox Mystique edition. There's a 3DFX Voodoo edition. I could go on. Um, but let's see. I actually love the abstract presentation of the original. Um, yeah, the original is, is special. I, I, I looked up whether the source code was available because I figured the source code has probably gone to every company to make their 3D accelerated version and yet and yet it hasn't been released i don't know how they kept it well they have they at the time they were licensing this engine for other games as well so there'll be other mech warrior 2 engine games but um yeah i saw you change the mech you don't like the jenner 2c the bruce jenner no i do not like the bruce jenner, 2C. jenner now this this thing has kind of a bug where sometimes you get stuck like on what kind of mech and now it's happened to me I'm stuck on Timberwolf now. Uh, oh, then now I can go to Marauder. Um, yeah, I think the Kardashians are not good mechs. I think that's the overall. Yeah, like you can play that and immediately lose. The Timberwolf is well armed, as is the Marauder. I think the Marauder is recommended for this um, particular game. As you notice on our weapons here, we have a whole bunch of weapons, um, and so this game is all about, ultimately about customization and throwing tons and tons of really powerful weaponry in your mech and arranging them in interesting ways. There are some really, really smart and fun mechanics in this game that are not seen in other mech games. Um, so another thing we should talk about here quickly is the control scheme. Um, game, later games in the mech sort of genre, like Steel Battalion, would have ridiculous controls, and I think a lot of it comes from, uh, from this game. It has this really impressive keyboard layout. Um, every single thing on here you need to know. You need to be able to execute all of these things. Maybe self-destruct not so much, but playing this game well is about mastering independent leg and torso movement so that you can effectively strafe, run and gun, um, avoid you know your enemies and and. Um, also use the navigation to go from point to point if you're in a mission that has a lot of going from different nav points and things like that. Autopilot's awesome. There are jump jets you can configure on your mech that add a whole nother literally dimension to this game. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm all about it. Now, do I remember how to do all this? Um, we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> uh, but we're going to put on... <laughs> You were going to put on chain fire and walk around? I mean, I was surprised I had remembered the basic controls. Just, it's sort of like... You got a little bit of instinctual. There. Yeah. So we're going to go launch and enjoy the amazing sound design here. 
34.54 degrees. Local time is 11.43.43 GST. All systems nominal. All systems nominal. Yeah, so you get the, you get the temperature. Nominal. You really feel like you just landed on another planet. You get the temperature down and everything. So we can see in my radar on the top there, we're coming upon somebody who's about to rock my socks, apparently. Um, I'm going to enable group fire and then I'm going to do a little pass on this guy. Oh, he is jump jetting. Now the thing yeah. about my group fire is that if I miss, it's going to take a long time to redo it. So let's try to take out something important. So this game requires you to manage your heat levels. You can't just fire all the time. Uh, if you do that, you'll overheat and you'll have to shut down the whole mech, which leaves you, of course, completely vulnerable. Um, and that actually is a pretty neat mechanic. Um, Sure. Yeah. Neat. Yes. I mean, it's. I understand the point, but you shut down for way too long, man. You do shut like down for quite some time. Okay, so if you go after this guy, what happens is <laughs> you find out, oh, these guys are coming down from the sky here. Now, the best time to shoot some other mechs is when they're still in the air. Falling. Yeah. Uh, they got some off on me. <laughs> okay, he's gonna yeah, walk I, around, but he doesn't have too many armaments anymore. Yeah. So you can blow the off individual are, are, parts. The generators don't have much firepower, but they're low, and you have to keep aiming up and down to, as they charge at you. I just feel like kids these days would think this game is just broken because it's like so slow paced. Yeah. And uh oh, this guy's especially this one is just, you know, gradients and Well, it's the, almost like naval battles. The, because the you system. can't just fire all the time and because there's a lot of inertia to your gigantic mech, and because the control scheme's a little awkward and you really need to like worry about you know, which direction you're pointed in. It's it's Enemy a very different experience. Enemy power up detected. Who is this guy? He's not one of mine. Oh boy. Uh oh. Oh, I, I went a little uh, bit too far, so now you're going to get to see what happens. Trying to demonstrate, huh? I'm, I'm demonstrating what happened. So, I overheated my weaponry, so I had to do a shutdown. <laughs> and now I need to kind of. Oh, I'm still shut down. There we go. Uh, so this is what happens when you uh, have to shut down like that. <clears throat> you can blow off individual parts of the mech, which is really handy because their armaments are on certain parts. Um, look at these little shorties. And so you can see there is very limited texture mapping. You can see the clan marking on the side. Uh-huh. Okay, we can't do too much. That guy just lost uh, no. an arm there. <laughs> Whoa, what are you You're gyrating, man. Yeah, I apologize for that. Neck gyrations. Oh. So, <clears throat> we're probably going to uh, lose our fire base at some point. <clears throat> now he's lost pretty much all of his armaments, and that's, that's it for him. And yeah, we'll go over here and see who else is hanging out. <laughs> oh no! I did it again. Oh, jeez. <laughs> anyway, I think. But yeah, this game, even on a fast pinion for the day, was didn't have great frame rate. So. I mean, the frame rate is not fantastic, but we are playing in SVGA mode, 640480. And right. You're it, playing with the very best PC that was available at the time. This is, this, so this is basically the best experience you could have. Now, they will release a Pentium edition that supports Windows. I don't know why they called it the Pentium edition, but I, I don't think it actually... <laughs> I think that's because the Windows one, you... I mean, you kind of need a Pentium for this game. 
yeah. on any version. But the Windows one especially, it's just... But, I mean, you can see be... this interesting abstract presentation with these sort of gradient shaded... <clears throat> Oh, no, I see. Why? Why do you oh, do this? So yeah, I got to turn off. You know, the problem is that I turned on chain fire. Uh -uh, I need to turn off my, my group fire because I'm overheating way too easily. But anyway. Um, anyway, well, while I was shut down, we lost because they blew up my fire base. They do just kind of throw more and more mechs at you until your fire base gets blown up. Um, but, I mean, this game... I think the presentation has aged well because it is abstract. Um, I think some of the actual like 3D accelerated versions haven't aged quite as well, but somehow. Um, and this game was much hyped, and it would, within three months of its release, sell 500,000 copies, which is huge, considering the high spec requirement and considering you know what sort of numbers PC games did then. And it would go on to be sold and resold in all these different versions, bundled with 3D accelerators and in, and in new collections like the Titanium Trilogy for years. So this is a huge you know, moneymaker for, for Activision. Um, and I obviously still get a lot out of it. Do, do you have any thoughts revisiting this game? Do you remember playing it back in 95? I, I remember playing it. In fact, I remember this is... The main reason that our father had to purchase our own Titanium <laughs> computer yes. because you were on his work machine all the time. Yes. Uh, so that was a good thing for us. This is, um, that was a great thing. This is the game that convinced my dad that he had to give me my own computer because, well, yeah. I actually did have my own computer at that point, but it couldn't play Mech Warrior 2 because it was a 386. Um, <laughs> it was 386 SX. SX. Slide 20. Show. Not 16. 20. Let's be slideshow edition. Yeah, it would have been. Um, yeah, uh, the game's a lot of fun, but you know, I mostly played uh, Mercs Mercenaries, which yeah. Is, so Mercenaries uh, is going to come out in nineteen ninety six. Standalone title, but it's kind of it's standalone. Insane. It's more. It's a little bit more pick up and play. So MechWarrior two, it like a lot of other great games from ninety five, like Command and Conquer, has two factions. And you can play as either, and each one has its own story, and it uses more FMV uh, to sort of develop that story. It uses FMV in a tasteful way, not as the not as the background for a boring shooter, but you know to 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 give you greater immersion and to help to elaborate on its story. Um, and mercenaries is a little different. You you basically take on jobs uh, that are offered to you. Mercenaries will come out next year, ninety six. Uh, and it, I think out of the box has direct 3D support, so it works with a host of different 3D accelerators that are available at the time. I am looking forward yeah. to playing that one on this show as well, because I also played a ton of Mercenaries and Mercenaries multiplayer. Um, yeah, I played it all from multiplayer on the net. That's right. Yeah, no, that was hot and new. Yeah. So, yeah, NetMech was where, where was that? Okay, well... What shall we play next, Alan? Well, would you like to go in order? Point to the menu. Uh, if we do that, I believe Cyber Mage comes next. Cyber Mage? That's... Now, Cyber Mage... Cool. I know. Like the, the Doom door sounds up. Uh, so, Cyber Mage... Some big, some big names here. I think I saw Origin. I think I saw Electronic Arts. Yes, by the makers of Wing Commander and Ultimates, Origin System, and System Shock, which was uh, a really good first-person, more than shooter, but right does that too. Well, so System yeah. Shock, there are kind of two. You can think about there being two kinds of FPSs, right? There's like the visceral action FPS as you know, sort of embodied in Doom. And then there's sort of the more cerebral narrative FPS, um, the best example of which is uh, System Shock. Um, this game does neither of those well. Uh, no, but you get to kill Maven and Slaughter. Exclamation. Kill Maven and Slaughter. Uh, yeah. Technically, this is D.W. Bradley's Cyber Mage, colon, 
Dark Light Awakening. <laughs> and D.W. Bradley's most well known for Wizardry 5, Wizardry 6, and Wizardry 7, and Wizards and Warriors. So you might guess that you're a wizard. Yes, you are a wizard. And if you hold down control, you can sort of choose between shooting things or hitting things with your axe. Whack, whack, Yeah, whack. I mean, almost everything is... It's funny, you cast spells, but they're almost all projectiles. So yeah, your spells uh, basically... There's, you get two kinds of guns. You have the shooting out of my palm gun, and you have normal projectiles. So, yeah, yeah I mean, the only mage aspect is that you shoot things out of your hand. So it's it's kind of like Hexen or, or Heretic in a way, um, but the cyber aspect, I guess we'll get to the cyber aspect. Um, well, we can say that this has, uh, we talked about there's only like three premises for any game made in 1995, but this one has number two, which is, <laughs> is uh, which is a world full of corporate evil devils and uh, anti-corporation rebels. So this falls under the the corporate uh, evil section. Yes. Although you're a wizard, so it's a, that's a little bit <laughs> out of cyber place. Cyber mage, which it's, is not, it's not which is not the yeah. same thing. Now I like the way you interact with things in this game. So if you hold on control, you bring up this hand menu, and then. If you just click on the screen, then you you actuate something in the game. Yeah, you should. Um... Ah. Uh, got myself into a lot of it trouble. It helps to hit uh, flash at some point to see the controls, because you need to pilot that tank. Yeah, so that's that's, that's the, the cyber. That's the, the more cyber part, I guess, is that you like hijack. Cyber tanks. truck. That's <laughs> right. Look at the. Okay, the, the music is just too pounding. It's also absolutely pouring rain where I am, so it's a great time to play PC games. So, yeah, so, oh my god, I accidentally... Okay, so, if I bring up this, I can, uh, what do I do with the truck? Uh, as I said, I think it's slashed, so you see the, all the controls, because there's a... Yeah, so... Oh, oh you got it. Yeah, so I can I can pilot this truck, um, which is atomically powered, and I go into this area outside here. There are entirely too many things. Now, being able to pilot vehicles, this is obviously like a huge, huge step forward. Uh, I don't think I've played an FPS so far where I've been able to actually do something like this. So um, the tank controls pretty much like a tank. Uh, it is not incredibly nimble. Um, but it is very powerful, and that is going to be extremely necessary when we come up against another tank in about a second here. Um, I don't like how the tank projectiles are tiny. They're no larger than the little balls I shoot out of my hand. Um, also, this, the MIDI music is just out of control. I, I know, there's like a it, organ concerto. <laughs> Johan Sebastian Bach oh, on the mic here. Uh, oh. Yeah, we got him. I like how fires green boogers on you. Yeah. I really wish my projectile were slightly larger. Also, I'm not entirely sure how I get out of here. I know I seem to be stuck behind this tree. Oh, whatever is shooting at me, that's not good. That is not good. That That's hurting. That's hurting a lot. Uh, okay. Let's, uh... Let's rethink our strategy here. <laughs> so, we played we played some bad FPS games. This is one of the better bad FPS games we played. But like I said, it it doesn't seem to me to succeed as either a a visceral action game or a sort of narrative driven first person game. It's just sort of what it is. Do you know how do I get up on the ledge? I have no idea. Do I need to hit slash that you said to bring up the... I mean, it's helpful. I think it's a good... Oh, there you go. Uh -huh. So, you can just straight. Control. Control. Well, I don't think you're going to jump up there. Control up is jump. No, I was wondering if maybe the tank... Oh, see? Jump jet. Oh. F shift plus W. 
Oh, there we go with that. <laughs> get off the keyboard. It's like keyboard cat. Keyboard cat, get off of there. Stop it, keyboard cat. You're driving people. Thank you. God. Who wrote the soundtrack? Okay, we're gonna do Shift W uh, and see if that works. No, I don't think we have jump jets. How do we get out of here? Because I think my armor's about to die. Um, Everything is is two buttons. Everything requires oh. some multi-key sequence. Um, let me see here. Uh, oh, okay, exit vehicles, tab. Well, of course, we need to have a completely separate control for exiting the vehicle. Also, why, why is my screen so small? Oh, you know what? I think it's because I have, I have it set to be too small. It's too fast on my fitting on 33. How am I supposed to jump? Use the force. Okay, control brings up this thing, but it also. Wow, that's pretty sad. I think maybe. Uh oh. What's happening here? Cool. Oh, you must have teleported. Uh, it's a little rough in here. That's a mana. I think it's a common theme for this game and tech war is the random teleports. You're not even sure what happened. Okay, well, let's see if I can jump over here. I, yeah. right. I oh, but then it get by something. Oh, a fusion <laughs> gun. Wait, is this good water or bad water? I think it was bad water. Oh no! Oh, keyboard cats, add it again. <laughs> keyboard cat, the little, little finale. Wow, that was quite a flourish there. Um, yeah. So that's Cyber Mage. Options, unfortunately, doesn't work. God, the music. Add the sound a little bit there. I, I, every time I do, it finds a way. To get louder. I don't know what is happening. This game is perfectly got... good. It's I well just orchestrated. Can't, I just can't take the orchestration anymore. I don't know. I kept on turning it down. It somehow kept on getting louder. Um, so our next game, Alan, it's going to be another real classic here. Um, did you our next game favors features Ooh, one of our favorite actors of all time. Well, everyone's favorite actor. I am going to need to turn this one up um, because you're going to miss the briefing, which is very important. Now, I I like how you do all caps tech for that. That's appropriate. No, well, so tell me, Alan. We're about to see the briefing for this game. When you saw this, did you think that William Shatner was in character? Or did you think that he was just being himself? Be honest. Uh, clearly himself, but That's what also, I thought too. he doesn't know how to act either, so... It's, That's never been a problem for him, but... Yeah. I suppose you're wondering why you're here. It's simple. Yes. <laughs> At least I think you are. You've already figured out that if this weren't important, you'd still be in trial sleep, so I'm not going to waste your time, or more importantly, mine. Last month, Miyoshi Nakahara and her family disappeared while sailing a 40-foot wind cruiser around the world in a blue block. A week later, Nikolai Petrovsky suddenly left his lab and has not been seen or heard from since. It's occurred to me that the disappearances were no accident. Oh, in case you missed the relevance, Nakahara is a Nobel Prize winning cyberneticist whose forte is the Matrix. And Petrovsky is a noted cyberbiologist who's an expert in tech addiction. The connection, if there is one, could be the worst thing to hit this city since the Quake of 22. If the, the Quake of 22? It's coming up. Next year, baby. Addiction San Francisco Quake 22. don't intend to let that happen. That's where you come Find out if there's a connection and eliminate the threat. Do a good job, and I think I can get you at least permanent. Screw up. Plot number one. one. Well, this is nice There's a small oh. town tech. Oh, we're not done. No, we're not done. We're not done here. 
you may know something about what's going on. See if you can shed any light on the situation. He's so, worth more alive than dead, so don't get too triggered at him. Let's, let's talk worth about more it. Worth more alive than dead. Worth more than you. Pipsqueak. Oh, and then we saw the build engine start up there. So let's talk. Let's before before we do anything, let's talk. Let's talk a little bit. William Shatner wrote a novel, or perhaps a series of novels, called Tech War, um, which are set in a dystopian future, which is soon, uh, in which you know criminals are put into cryogenic stasis or something, and then brought back in order to do the dirty work of law enforcement or something like that and that um and apparently i mean this game is sort of uh a metaphor for the war on drugs perhaps uh except that drugs are called tech or that the drugs of the future are sort of technology based which is a sort of prescient and sort of b sort of lazy and there are these sort of drug lords that are called tech lords that you have been resuscitated, revived in order to defeat. Now, if you succeed in taking down the tech lords, then they'll grant you your freedom, your liberty. This is a plot very similar to Richard Morgan's, uh, you know, uh, what are Altered Carbon series, if you're into cyberpunk. So it's, you know, some cyber, real cyberpunk kind of ideas going on here, but with a real William Shatner flair. Um, yeah, the, the problem is, like, Obviously, in these games, we've seen a lot of bad acting in F and B, but like, yeah. And now I don't know. Seen if, like, more. I don't see. I don't see what they're going for because he doesn't act like any human being would. You know, he's like, "You're the best," or maybe you are. <laughs> uh, I don't want to waste any more of your time. Well, more importantly, my time. My time. That was my. He's worth more alive than dead. So don't shoot. Shoot a lot of people, but don't shoot him. Well, and if I need you, you to kill them, but don't kill them. They just complain about how many innocent NPCs you kill, like all the whole time. Like, <laughs> you gave you me a gun and had me go through New York and shoot everybody. Yeah, like, I mean, what did you what did you expect was going to happen? Yeah, so it's bizarre. I, William, William Shatner's playing a character from his book, um, and when Walter they said that, Van Tom. yeah, yes. So I was or initially excited about this, right? <laughs> you can't tell. One of the two. I was I was originally excited about this game for two for two reasons. Reason number yeah. one, this is the second build engine game uh, that we've seen. Yeah. Um, the first one being Witch Haven, which used an earlier version of the build engine plus some really yeah. atrocious Most character right. models. To your right, if you uh, go to your right, there's a not that there's right. a poster for Witch right. Haven. Yes, we can. I think I hooked up the WASD. Uh, that game here. is really. Yeah. I don't know. It just it doesn't come off as like a build game whereas this one it's kind of duke nukem 3d yeah so we're seeing a lot it, it takes better you it makes better advantage of the build engine there's some yeah. dynamic elements like you know the subway trains that go by and things like that it yeah. seems a lot more buildy um for lack of a better term um the, the other reason that um i was excited to play this game is when we said i'd be taking down tech lords so i was thinking you know mark zuckerberg tim cook jack dorsey but it turns out that they really meant, you know, basically drug lords. Um, so we're instead going to be assassinating minorities in a futuristic Los Angeles, um, which is kind of not the greatest thing. Now this game has some interesting little touches. If I pull out my, if I pull out a weapon while I'm here in the subway with these, uh, with these law enforcement guys that kind of remind me. You remember the Jaguar fighting game, Kasumi Ninja, with the guy. The, who would lift his kilt and fire projectiles. It looks like he's a... It's like the first frame of animation from that. Like he's about to fire an energy mm. bomb. Um, if you pull out your weapon here in front of these guys, they'll tell you you gotta drop your weapon and they'll like start shooting at you. So it's best to leave here. Yeah. This actually reminds me a little bit of the beginning of Max Payne as well. Uh, here's another interesting sort of dynamic... Uh, Oh. element we've got these uh it's, rotating the subway thing there. is very max pain yeah it is very now that's that's that here that's okay. that and here's my one-liner for the whole game every okay. texture in this game makes me want to throw up i don't know what's <laughs> wrong <laughs> the textures are very low res even though i mean we're running this in svga yeah. and it's playing 
okay. I mean, we're getting okay performance. This is a beta version of the game and a very early beta version of the build engine, and so performance is not not great. Yeah, I don't know um, if it's the resolution or just the colors, especially when we get to the hospital and like everything's in word yeah, art. Everything's like, in word art. I, I, oh, better yeah. watch out. So the thing about this game is there's like something wrong with the rate of fire. Like only every now and then does my fire, like does my click actually register? Most of the time nothing happens. So like, okay, I think he's just cowering. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess the cool part of this, about this game is you can't just like run through like most first first person shooters. You do actually have to uh, kind of watch your way around corners, otherwise you do die very quickly. Yeah, so th there are a lot of really narrow corridors here. I've never seen an entrance to a hospital that looked like this. I can, I can, I can imagine some, some problems here. These, uh, these opening doors are sort of a neat little build engine touch. Um, so I think there's someone from the right who's going to start shooting at us. Got him. You gotta click way more than you need to. Like I said, the rate of fire is kind of messed up, and then this guy. They their rate of fire is amazing. My rate of fire is horrendous. Uh -huh. there go to the ER. Pick up some med kits. Yeah. Handy. Yeah. So my my one liner for this game is, A, hey, I'm stuck in this door. <laughs> no, don't. I'm yeah, not trying to. I'm glitchy, not trying to kill you. It's glitchy. glitchy as hell. Everything, like whether you can squeeze past anything, sometimes it works, <laughs> as it doesn't. Now this guy's yeah. stuck. Oh, let you. I, I got. I got through. I actually couldn't get the the blue key card, which you're going for here, because it was stuck behind a bed. <laughs> yes. I killed somebody, and and uh, yeah, I just had to stop playing at that point. So. Okay. Where where can I find it? Uh. The uh, blue key card's on the second floor. You actually have to go, okay, up, there. go up there. Gotcha. There's a restroom. It's my one liner for this is William Shatner's Duke Nukem 3D. It does feel a little bit like Tim <laughs> Silverman made the engine, and then <laughs> I hit the door. Oh, hits me. The door keeps hitting you. Yeah, the door keeps hitting me, bouncing off my face. Yeah. Also, why does why does the staff lounge door? Open like a door in Doom, or is all the <laughs> other doors open normally? It's like, there's some yeah, I basic... I mean, I, I know it's the like... future, but, like, what future? And the donuts. A lot of little donuts. little touches. But you can tell whoever made this didn't ever make a 3D environment before. I mean, if you look at the 3D environments that are in, for instance, Dark Forces, they're, they're a lot more logical and lived in, and, and this... These are, everything is too cramped. Um, but, yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, the texture mapping uh, is, is something. My conclusion was Ken Silverman made the build engine and, and then Bill Shatner made the rest of this game. <laughs> I feel, yeah, well, so it's the folks in Mar-a-Lago at Capstone who uh, really put this thing together. Capstone, um, I remind you, the pinnacle of entertainment software. Yeah. Where's the the? Okay, I was looking for the. the elevator. I don't know how I I just bounced off of something. Yeah. Uh, do I need a code to use the elevator? No, just, you touch the that thing. It's, but you might get stuck in the elevator depending on what happens. That's another thing. Okay. Oh, where am I being shot from? Oh. Oh, oh. oh who is that? Oh, they're not even. They're not even on this floor yet. I'm like partly on the floor. Yeah, the frame rate is a little. I mean, part of it is that I'm using. I'm trying to use WASD and mouse controls. Um, but I mean, even then, you can see I'm getting a lot of a lot of screen tear here. Um, it's all over the place. Oh, hi. We have a a, a female victim for my person. Um, uh, tech person. Tech associate. I'm gonna find this tech lord. Has anybody seen Jack Dorsey? Anybody? No. Another bathroom. What is it with build engine games and restrooms? <laughs> and it's tiny. You think you think they could afford a better bedroom, a uh, better bathroom? Uh, 
Okay. So we found the blue key card. No, it's more yeah, health. There's just a lot of health in most of I mean, it is a hospital, so I, I'm not surprised there are a lot of med kits. Okay. One of these doors, maybe? What else do we have? What's this door? This looks like this. Oh, it's another Doom door. I, I mean, it's going to be a Oh my gosh. Come on. Oh, you got the blue key card. Ah, see? Uh, you, you've... Alright, now what do I do? <laughs> in the hospital section. Now you have to go to the tech lord section. Okay. Is there any explanation why the key to the tech lord section is in the hospital? It's because that woman was carrying it? Yeah. Yes. Uh -oh. it, it might be hard for... Am well, I on the first floor yet? Or no, I don't think that. Okay, okay. Trying to hit this button. There we go. Okay, click fly. Okay. Oh, is there somebody else here? No. Okay. Uh, where's the... This is the front door, right? Yeah. Okay. These retract in an interesting way. Right. So I think you would go... It's straight and back is like an alleyway. But don't get hit by the capstone truck. It comes through well, here. Yeah, it's an alleyway. It, okay, over. that was the subway, so it's probably... Oh, I remember an alleyway. Turn right. It's, it's to your right. Oh, uh, it's that direction. Someone's shooting at me. Quite annoyingly. That's the police department. Someone's shooting me right in front of the police department. Oh. Oh. Uh, should have taken the alley. Yeah. Well, I can change my mouse sensitivity. Can you? No. Now that I brought that up, I can't do anything. What did I do? <laughs> Ken! Ken, you got a bug here. Ken, I can't get out. Ken! We'll never see the William Shatner... Uh... Oh. Outro to this level. I did. No, I'm never gonna see that. Oh no, see, I, I accidentally shot in the subway. So this weapon's interesting. It kind of shoots this blue netting over someone. Did you try to get on the subway? Is it possible to do that? Uh, you can. And then it just goes around what in circles. I... Or you can ride it by just like. Oh well. Okay, well, anyway. It's so busy, you can kind of do anything. Maybe. It's like Grand Theft Auto, right? It's an open world game. Like, maybe Liberty City, yeah. So, yeah, I love this weapon. Someone gets, like, from Highlander. Oh, it gets electrocuted and falls over. Okay, so, uh, it, an interesting game. I like how they use the Star Trek font for the Tech War menu. Um, I don't know <laughs> what they're trying to suggest there. Is this part of the Star Trek universe? Um, I, do you have anything else to say about this game? The, the final level is you have to fight in the Matrix, oh. and it's even more unplayable. I it's see. It's just like, you're in a dark room, and then like lights flash at you. It's, it's atrocious. Okay, that's even more sort of uh, cyberspace. There's, there's, there's a really video uh, of this called, uh, oh, sorry, by Civi11 on YouTube. So, okay. Um, props to Civi. Civi, go watch Civi's video if you want to see more tech war, because I personally have had enough. Wow. Challenge, high tech criminals of the future. See, this is where I was thinking, you know? Like Elizabeth Holmes, um, <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg. but no, no, we don't. We don't get any of them. Tech war. The this is this is the best it's gonna get us. This is the pinnacle. It doesn't get better than this. It will. It won't get better than that. Oh. Um. I think that is a fine selection of games from this month's disc. Um, if you had wanted to see 
another game. We could play Zone Raiders briefly. If you are interested in the armored hovercraft genre. Are you asking me? Are you somehow asking the viewers? Are you going through the fourth wall here? Yeah, I'm going through. What do you, viewers, do you want to see any more of this? This is why it's we should. It's a quick one. It's a Come quick on. One. <sighs> the Raiders. Raiders? Not raid? Not wet demo? <laughs> wet demo. <sighs> okay. So the last game we're going to play is Zone Raiders. <clears throat> it's a futuristic vehicular combat video game. But it's yes. really hover, hover with guns. Hover with guns. It reminds me... I don't know. It's like Cybermorph with textures. So we're supposed to find oh, these... In this so demo, hard. we're supposed to find these uh, atomic power couplers. We're supposed to go to Tashi Station and get the power converters. Yeah. Um, we do have uh, a fair amount of video options. Um, SVGA looks great um, but as we're going to see here does not uh provide a very high frame rate on even a state-of-the-art machine from from 1995 um and we can look in detail we can go full uh we can turn on review ryzen texture detail high it's it's so bizarre to me the concept of doing a higher resolution but not full like anyway I mean, yeah, what are you really getting? So, I believe the car you have access to is a converted 1958 Ford Thunderbird. Yeah. Um, which here has these nice purple highlights and things. It doesn't look so good, I think, in the actual in-game model. Um, what difficulty would you like to play on? I think Rookie's good. You yeah. just don't want to play. Like, Recon, there's no, no guns. There are no enemies so. in Recon. Um, so, but, yeah. yeah, so none of these other things actually do anything. In this, in this demo, we're supposed to find the two components of the atomic power coupling exit the zone. As we can see, frame rate, not exceptional. Oh, this is wow. really making the case for texture mapping 3D accelerators. Uh, let's, let's go. So we can shoot at things that appear as targets and occasionally successfully destroy them. Uh, and sometimes not successfully destroyed. Yeah, following his radar. What? Pointing. What? The radar tells you where the thing you need to Where the up atomic there. power coupling units are. You just call oh. it the APC. Oh. I don't want to be so informal. And, uh... Oh, as you can see, oh. when we enter the combat area, the frame rate <laughs> becomes nothing. So I don't see any yeah, atomic power uh, coupling units anywhere. I think it's a weapon no. upgrade. Follow the radar. What? Jeez. The radar's not telling me anything. There's nothing. Oh, right. Oh, what? right. That's not how radar works. It's supposed to just sweep. What? Ah, oh, you're so bad at this. Okay, I'm going. I'm going. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What are you? Oh. I'm going to the, the that yeah, direction. And look what you do. Well, he you told just me not to scratch. Right gigantic triangles. Your whole thing. <laughs> Who is shooting me? Stop. You deserve to be shot at. Come on. I, I'm stuck. I The frame rate is sunk to the extent that I don't appear to be able to fire anything successfully. Well, I think I might have fired something. So in order for this game to actually be playable, you pretty much have to play it in standard resolution of 320 by 240. So we're going to do that. I just wanted to demonstrate how this game makes the case for 3D acceleration. So, oh, knock it back down here. <clears throat> now we will go and make another run in the Thunderbird. So did you play this? Look, now we actually have something that possibly multiple digits in our frame rate. It was really fast in DOSBox, but then again, well, that's not the really the same thing, is it? The Ryzen 4700U is a bit better. Though. The Ryzen 4700U is capable of playing this game in SVGA. 
So there you go, folks. The best system you could have in 1995 is the Ryzen 4700U. Unless Intel comes through with the $5,000 to remake my digital life, in which case the Tiger Lake SOC is by far your best option. So I'm going over here. It's very hard to go much farther over here. Wait, wait, okay, it's up, it's up there, it's up there. Okay, 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 okay. All right, where is it? It's not that. It's thing. actually not here. It's not. But you know. But it's in this direction. Yeah. Yeah, quite a ways. But you keep crashing into triangles again. Oh, oh my god. I'm not crashing in though. I am sort of. You're not a gentle sliding around. Bird. Oh, and I remember one thing. This game has uh, drift controls. Oh. You can drift. Um, yeah, so the APC piece is like behind this. Thing oh, there, there it is, there it is. Ah, oh, jeez. Yeah. Okay, well, it seems oh, to be heavily God. guarded. Uh, my plan oh. was to get it and go, but I seem to have not picked it up. You didn't even get it. I tried! I got knocked over. These guys are extremely aggressive. Okay, I'm gonna get it this time. I got it. Alright, you got okay. one half. I'm getting out of here. That's probably all you're Some getting. Rock and roll. No faith in you. We're doing great. Oh, no. oh, we're just gonna go around this guy, you know. Why? Oh, jeez. There are too many people shooting in. <laughs> uh, I don't think I can go through that. Okay, let's uh, take a quick little detour. Oh, that's a bit of a missile. A bit of a missile. Oh, we're doing good. We're doing good. We're gonna get it. We're gonna raid the zone. We're raiding it. Oh, I can't shoot backwards, can I? Yeah, I... Yep, 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 that way. Going. I'm going, I'm raiding the zone. <laughs> oh, I got it. You got it, and then... Exit activated. Oh my Exit. gosh, it's like 10,000 people behind me. <laughs> uh, so what What do we think of this game? Did this game, I have nothing, no idea what the critical reception was, sales, I have no knowledge whatsoever. It it reminds me a well, bit of Wikipedia pause. Is, Wikipedia is uh, the answer. Next generation of plot of the game is that rarest of animals, a first person <laughs> racer that truly conveys a sense of speed. It's true. It is fast. So Wipeout's not out at this point. I don't believe. No, I don't think so. Because Wipeout would actually convey a sense of speed. No, and and it has sort of a degree of combat, but it's not like fetch quest mission based in the way this game is. So got a 4 out of 5 from next gen and a golden triad from computer game review. The golden triad? The golden triad, is sure. That some sort of opium gang or that's an award you can get? That's great. Um, I mean, the game what was the, there's some controls. You can slide, so you can strafe. There's a slide. There you go. Wait, yeah, what? So you, How do cars strafe? I don't know, but they this one can. So you can use it to drift. So like we're drifting. See, look at this? Yeah. Oh. Right. I, that's what I was really enjoying, is I was sort of drifting. It makes the combat a little bit easier. Because cool. you can uh, kind of circle strafe. Which is something you typically can't do in racing games. Circle strafing is not something that's frequently found in racing games, but um, it's in this one. Anyway, this game is a bit of fun. I again, it really makes the case for 3D accelerators. We we have some we have some perspective correct texture mapping. We have some nice garrote shading on on some of the other elements, and it's very fluid at this low resolution, but as soon as you go up to uh, an SVGA resolution, suddenly the game just absolutely crawls. Um, so I am looking forward to 3D accelerators becoming available and us getting to use them and talk about them on this show. Um, but I think that's enough for November of 1995. We got to play a little bit of Mac Warrior 2, enjoy that, relive that. Um, and I'm, I'm, I don't know what's coming up in December. 
please command and conquer soon. That's all I can it's say. It's probably another RPG that is forgettable. It's another forgettable. Maybe they'll actually remember to put Stonekeep on the disc this time. That would be good. It's probably Shadows over Riva. Except this time it'll say it'll say Shadows over Riva, you know, and then it'll have a mech over here to further confuse young people like me. I I was so confused. Why is there this guy with an axe trying to chop off the head of a giant spider by my mech warrior too? I didn't remember that. Uh, anyway, uh, go to smuginplay.com where you currently won't be able to purchase one of these. But at some point, you may be able to. It's actually a fairly capable coffee mug. Um, did you just spill it all over your laptop? <laughs> oh, I'm not cutting this. And that's all we got, folks. Thank you for watching. Alan has now destroyed his new Ryzen 4700-based laptop. Um, remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Check us out on Instagram at SmugInPlay uh, and our website, as I mentioned, SmugInPlay or SmugInPlay.com. Thank you, and we'll see you next month.